So now we'll jump into stuff that's coming out next week um, on the 27th. So we've got some. These are <coughs> or some, is supposed to. At least. It's supposed to, at least. Yeah. So I'll let you jump in here. All right. Uh, my first pick is Vampirella Year One. Um, always been interested in Vampirella. Um, she's a character, again, that has always been in, in my peripheral vision for as long as I have uh, read comic books. This year, I made it a point to really start reading her stuff. Uh, and I was telling Chris, I'm about 30 ish issues into her uh, Warren Vampirella magazine from back in the 70s late 60s early 70s or maybe just early 70s um and it just it's her character the fact that from from what i have seen so far it blows my mind that that character is still around in in any uh shape or form uh and doing quite quite well for dynamite i mean mm -hmm. they continually are, are pumping out vampirella or she is a character in other books you know two yep. or three other books so uh, she she definitely is still a draw. Even it's got to be even with the newer generations of comic book readers. In in order to keep it as popular as it is, it, it can't be us gray beards that are buying this stuff. It's got to be some crossover. It, I totally agree. It, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. But um, she's always fascinated me. Um, Christopher Priest. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot of other stuff that he has written in and out of Marvel. <laughs> yeah, I say that kind of tongue in cheek because that's mainly where I know him from is Marvel. Um, the artist um, and actually the cover artist, I'm not familiar with, but um, mm. I, there's nothing wrong with the cover artist. Looks rather anime inspired. Which yep. Th there's yep. nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to potentially picking that up and and m maybe starting my current uh, Vampirella journey with this in that it says year one uh we'll see if it's a true year one or if it is a first year after one of the previous volumes that they just finished up i think it's definitely a year if i remember what the press release said about this it is at least the year one that christopher priest is looking at as her sort of origin right yeah. right after she came here okay. so well no not even that since she was a child Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's going all it's going far back. So I guess this is what div made her into who she is, kind right. of thing. Okay. So, okay. So a true a true year one kind of thing. So, uh, but you know, you gotta wait until the you know check out the issue to know for yeah. sure. So, yep. <laughs> a, a solicitation can tell you one thing, and the book can tell right. you something else. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. <laughs> uh, let's see. So my my pick for next week is something is killing the children number 25 i'm still a ginormous fan of this series um and this is i guess we talk about 25 issues being milestone issues or whatever uh i don't think that's what this particular issue is is some kind of milestone thing uh but it is you know this series has just been it's been good from the beginning i think we've talked about that at yep. nauseum over the last year yep. and and so this is just the next big issue and i'm looking forward to uh the you know the scarlet uh um confrontation whenever she decides she wants to actually you know get involved other than just ominously walking around right yeah <laughs> so, yeah but uh but yeah so it just continues to be one of my favorite books i'm i'm looking forward looking forward to seeing what this issue brings us and i don't know how many i mean we're gonna probably be going on a break here soon with something is killing uh while they get uh at least get started with the next arc yeah it seems like i saw somewhere in these 25 six seven ranges is where the next break was going to be but i don't remember where i saw that and it um, says this is the shocking conclusion to oh and it is they're actually saying a milestone anniversary issue um so this is i guess this will be the the last issue for a little while for the current story arc and yeah, yeah. um it, th this is particularly good for you since your other long running boom book is getting ready to go away here in a couple yes. months. So yes, it ho hopefully this one will keep going and, and there will overlap and, and ease that pain as it, as, as it, you, you can transition. 
So I appreciate I appreciate I, the I, reminder. I, I look forward to that for you that you're able to transition to another long running <laughs> title you like. That's that's good because one is ending. Yeah, so uh, you know my once in future, my once in future. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, uh, my second pick, the Judge Judge Dread Complete Case Files number thirty nine. Um, I pick these up whenever they come out because. It is the easiest, most straightforward way to read Judge Dredd that there is. Every book uh, has been chronologically oh. reprinting the Judge Dredd strips from first 2000 AD. And then where the magazine started, they started mm -hmm. incorporating the Judge Dredd strips from that as well. So that was about um, case files. 15 i think or 16 <laughs> oh i'm, I'm sorry. oops oh, hyper oh, potatoes yeah. a fan too oh, yeah, my ed, bad. ed is rubbing the salt of the wound for us once and future <laughs> fans yes he is I it's fine like we it, will persevere it's, it's it's very confusing for me so um <laughs> the um so since 15 or 16 every issue of the case files has chronologically the 2000 AD Judge Dredd strips and the magazine Judge Dredd strips now yeah. in, in every issue. So um, I have I have bought every one of these. I am a couple three behind, uh, but I'll, I'll read them just just like we all will. You know, yeah, oh, we yeah. have it, but we'll read it. The so, ever grow the ever growing you know yes, read yes. pile that just <laughs> with with all these new avenues of getting books it just oh seems to yeah. yeah um but yeah so I'm I'm looking forward to yet another case files coming out and and knowing knowing that when I get a chance to sit down and read these I will be able to read you know all of the Judge Dread because um, a lot of the other uh, 2000 AD and magazine strips don't necessarily appeal to me. Gotcha. Uh, it's a very hit and miss judge dread though. I enjoy very much. So that's good. Looking forward to that. I am, uh, I'm recommending everyone as an image book is the hallows. It's a, it's a one shot. Um, and really, I mean, Chris Ryle does good work. Uh, the, the times he does write. I mean, he's mostly known as an editor, uh, but he has written quite a few stuff. Uh, but it's Sam Keith doing the art. Oh, oh well, there and we go. So that, so that was like, oh, Sam Keith. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is a, you know, for you, for you out there that, that, that really want to make it hard for you. This does have a cover A and a cover B. The cover B is drawn by Ashley Wood. So Ooh, good luck. Wow. Figure it's, it's a nine. Which one cover you want price more? is nine ninety nine. I wouldn't be. I would not judge you for picking up both. <laughs> oh, absolutely! I, I would not judge you at all. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. This. I don't think solicitation actually says how many page. No, it doesn't say how many pages it is. Um, but it's you know it says it's a specially priced extra length comic. Artist Sam Keith, writer Chris uh, Ryle, transport you to a dystopian near future Japan where spectral once human husk prey on the unfortunate. This is Sam Keith all over the place. And, and it's just my question is how freaky will this Keith be? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, how far out there is he going to go in this art? This doesn't look. Th this seems like a, a more sedate kind of. Uh, yes, Sam Keith kind of art. Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know, if okay, so if this is what we get in the book, okay. But for those of you that have followed Sam Keith over the years, he can get he can get Ashley Wood out there. Oh yeah, I mean, his oh, yeah. art. Yeah. So uh, for me, I would be interested to to grab one and flip it open to see how far out they let Keith get for this. Yep. Like I said, it comes out next week, so I'm. Uh... I'm going to be hitting one of my shops uh, up on uh, I, and the thing is I've completely missed this on FOC and everything. Like, I don't know oh, how wow. this snuck by uh, yeah. me. So um, are you going to get both covers? No, no. no? Well, oh. I haven't. Well, I, no, right now. No. I'm okay. Keep saying that over and over again. Cause I'm trying to not buy variant. Yes. Cards. Okay. Have you seen the Ashley Wood cover? I have not, but that's what I was going to oh, say. The caveat made... is I have not oh, seen okay. the that, Ashley that Wood cover. A difference there. Yeah. So <laughs> I will, uh, if, if I do hit up my comic shelf Wednesday after work, 
uh, I will I will report there at the oh well, dang it, Mike, why you gotta tell me things like that? It's a reprint. IDW is IDW, already published. Okay. Oh, I thought maybe it that's... sounded familiar. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is some older work that I Mike, didn't know. Mike Myers about. with the with the four one one there. I appreciate that, Mike. Because if I know I haven't read this before, so but it does make sense because I know Chris Rowell you know, works for IDW or worked for them in the past. Uh, back in 20, 10 years okay. ago. Okay. Wow. So, so maybe it? when you go to the store, Chris, see if they have the see 20 the, club, yeah, see if they have uh, the trade. That's what I'll do. Oh, this is going to be a fact finding mission. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Give me some, some cool to do with the comic shop. I'm excited. <laughs> so thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. All right, so we'll move on to oh. All right, now this this is a side of Ed that maybe a lot of you folks don't know. Okay, um, I just like when when I go in the closet to listen to Evanescence, <laughs> I also take my stack of My Little Pony comics in there with me and read those as well. So uh, I, I I enjoy some of the younger comics um, that are out right now. Now. Peyo, uh, the French-Belgian <laughs> artist uh, responsible for the Smurfs way back in the 60s, responsible for the Smurfs back in the 80s when we all, who are old enough, saw the animated cartoon. Oh, I bought these graphic novels, too. That started really my my Smurfs. Um, several, several years ago. All right, Mike, you too, man. All right, Mike, um, you have a good, good evening. Several years ago, uh, Paper Cuts started individual volumes of the Payo books. And uh, I thought, well, cool, this is my opportunity to get his entire Smurfs work. Sure, yeah. Um, and so they got, um, I remember asking the publisher who was, um, I can't remember his name, but he's a, he was a, well, apparently not well known enough. Um, writer uh, i think or writer artist and he he was saying that there were going to be in like the mid 40s of volumes well wow. they've put out about 21 or 22 and they have switched to this three in one format mm -hmm. i have no idea why um some of these stories have already come out in in the the single volumes mm -hmm. some of these stories they had not yet published there but they have uh ha 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 um they have they're publishing for the first time in these three and one graphic novels. So, but either way, Salakrup, that's who it is. Salakrup for yeah, see, cuts. see, yeah. see, Mike, Mike had to go to dinner and now and, Peta picks up right, the mantle. Right. He, he steps in with the, yeah. with the four one one, uh, for Mike. since you know, me, the host of the show is freaking clueless. It, yeah. Okay. There you <laughs> it's go. All right. That's why uh, it's have, only my show. And I don't why we know have what a chat I'm talking about. Yeah. It's uh, Hey, you know, that's, that's a good thing about pocket. You don't have to know what you're talking about to make one. Nope. I improve. Smurfs. Um, enjoy the Smurfs. Look forward. Yeah, I've, I've been buying these three in one volumes. And so this is just the next to continue my collection. And it'll it'll slot right in there with my Judge Dread reading. And I'll, I'll alternate to go, you know, hard, soft, hard, soft, hard, soft. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah. Hey, but you know, you know, you, you need a, a, have... a palate cleanser from both. Right. You can't have too much either way. It's yeah. In Hyper Potato, it's... I'm clueless in all things except a little <laughs> comic. Not, aren't we all? Are we all? Oh goodness! So, all right. So, my last uh, pick for next week uh, for you folks to check out. We haven't had a Cullen Bun uh, sighting in the episode, so I thought I would throw this one oh. out there. Book of Shadows, number one. Uh, this is from yes. Valiant Comics. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, I've not picked up a whole lot of Valiant over the last several years. Uh, random issue here or there. But my son is a big uh, Shadow Man fan, has been for a long time. Talked about it multiple times on various podcasts. Um, so he has picked up all the stuff and is looking forward to this. But he has now switched to trade paperbacks, and oh. so so the first, so we're not. Uh, we may still get a, a a copy of this first issue. May find its way in the house next week. <laughs> He's gonna have just, to wait a little just, while, just for uh, just for kicks and giggles. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll definitely be holding off uh, since he's doing that uh, to to read the whole story. But I definitely want to check out check out this first issue. Um, but yeah, Book of Shadows is is sort of this big 
it's not a crossover. It's just a big story uh, that's involving. Uh, if you, I mean, you look on the cover. Uh, if you're watching the video, obviously, uh, you got Shadow Man, you got Punk Mambo, and you got uh, uh, Doctor Mirage, D- Eternal Doctor Warrior. Mirage, Eternal Warrior, and I forget who this yeah, is. Yeah, the the uh, black lady's that is, not that coming is, to me, and I don't know why I'm forgetting what her name. Maybe I don't know. Do they list them? They don't even list her name. Okay. Yeah. So maybe are, she's a new character. I, I think she is newer, but like not for this book oh, per se. Okay. Um, and this is it, it, the the Eternal Warrior kind of stretches this, but this is a team up of the uh, heroes of of the the darker regions of the Valiant Universe, shall yes. we say? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I, I would never think that Eternal Warrior fits in there, but okay. We'll see. I mean, that's, that's yeah. kind of the thing. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those characters that, you know, he kind of is all over the place. Colin Bunn will make it fit. I, I, I have no, no doubts, you know, that he'll make it work at all. Raise a mark, a tweet <laughs> In Colin's honor. Yes. Yes. You have to In do Cullen, that. we trust. <laughs> so, all right. So that's everything. Uh, some picks, not everything, but at least the highlights uh, that yeah, we're looking some, forward some to next week. things that stuck out to us. Yeah. So if you've got some stuff, uh, if you're watching us here on YouTube after the fact or listening to this and want to send us some of your picks and stuff like that, things that we should be checking out. Oh, that'd or be cool. Yeah. If you, or what yeah, you picked. Yeah. That would be kind of neat. Um, if you've got suggestions, you know, for future episodes of books that we should be checking out either through FOC or, uh, or, you know, for our new release, you know, for the following week or whatever, by all means, you know, hit us up on Twitter and stuff like that. We would definitely like to check out because I mean, we do go through FOC, but obviously, I mean, tonight's a good example. I missed a couple of these and I don't know how I missed them, uh, but it, it, it happens. And so, uh, so yeah, so definitely, throw uh throw us some suggestions and stuff like that we would be more than happy to take a look at them and then uh and maybe even you know recommend them along with you on the show so 